Hey, what's up? Ryan Kohler here, hiring guru, hire hacker, with today's hiring tip. Now, today we're gonna to talk about something a little bit different. Make sure you stick around to the end. I have some links where you can download the, the integration evaluator tool that I'm going to talk about. So just make sure you stick around to the end. I'll tell you how to get the link to it. Now, today we're gonna to talk about something a little bit different. We're gonna talk about integrations. Integrations are something that I get asked about all the time. We're constantly being asked, do you integrate with this system? Do you integrate with that system, et cetera, et cetera. Um, which is a great idea to talk about. It's, it's an awesome question to be asked. Integration is a great, powerful tool to make HR's lives easier. But a lot of times I think that as a HR professional, we're very, very focused on just one single type or maybe two types of integrations. And we don't really think, kind of zoom out and take the broad context of what we're talking about. Now, I'll be honest, one of the main reasons integration comes up usually with us is when a client is using our platform, just our, our standalone best of breed applicant tracking and sourcing tools, and along comes their payroll provider that also has checked the box by building an applicant tracking system. And they pitch them and say, hey, why do you keep paying money to those guys when you could use our end-to-end -end fully integrated system? Um, and so then clients might leave us and go use that system. And the sad thing is there's a handful of things that happen afterwards and six months later um, that nobody told them about. Um, and the reason nobody told them about it was was because they didn't ask and because nobody understood kind of the value that maybe a, a really best of breed system was providing versus just something that was done to check the box on an RFP. So today I'm going to kind of open up the hood and show you exactly how you should think about integration when you buy a new system, when you look to switch systems, or, or even when you're just tweaking the way you use any system um, to, to really think through how powerful, and that's really why I like to call this, it's an integration power report. It tells you how powerful the integration or the interconnectedness of the different systems and tools and products that you use are in making things easier and better and more effective. So the first thing we have to do is number one, talk about what integration is, right? Integration and why it's asked simply put is that applicant tracking systems, that, that software that captures the initial application and that holds it throughout the hiring process, they're kind of the, the, what we call the system of record. They're the main database that initially gets applicant information that's owned by the company and tracks it all the way through until somebody gets hired and it throws it somewhere else. And anything that happens during the hiring process, whether it's assessments or background checks or, or pushing to a new system, onboarding, uh, video interviews, calendaring, anything like that, it needs the information from the applicant tracking system. And specifically, it needs the contact information, applicant's name, phone number, email address, address, that type of stuff. It needs that information. And if it can't be pulled out and connected with this third party tool, then somebody's going to have to retype it. And, and the person who's going to have to retype it is either an HR person, an HR admin, a manager, or heaven forbid, the job seeker or employee. And so any times that we can reduce retyping information, that's a powerful idea, right? And, and so that's really kind of the concept of integration, that first part of integration, the part of in, integration number two. And, and really that first one was pushing data that you have already out into a system. Another tool or type of integration would be pulling information into your applicant tracking system. This is one that's not really talked about very often. So pulling information in that information could be um, an applicant's information from a job board. It could be the results of an assessment or something like that. Any of those types of things, right? So that's the second type, pulling information in. Number three type of information would be housing everything that's going on in one spot. Meaning that when you're looking at say an applicant's record, you're able to see other stuff without leaving, logging in somewhere else, and going and searching for that applicant's information. Even though the integration might include sending you over to a third party platform, the idea is not having to go and search for the person again that you're currently looking at. And then the final type of integration is usually SSO or single sign-on. And that's the idea that I only have to log in once and then I'm automatically logged into other systems I go look at that my logins are hooked together. Now, why does all this stuff matter? Well, the simple fact of the matter is, is that 
generally speaking, we are very simplistic in our idea of integration. And usually you're using integration when it comes to making a purchase. Either you're being pitched by another system and saying, hey, you should go and, and look at this, it's integrated, or when you're actually building RFPs and you're thinking about buying a new system, you're saying it's integrated. And sadly, most people don't understand the power that they have in the integrations they use today, which means that when they look to buy a new system, they don't ensure that that power transfers. Now, what do I mean when I talk about power? Let me give you the best example. So I have a YMCA in a major city. They used to use our platform to do their hiring. Um, and they found their, I think one of their, their payroll providers, somebody like that, hit them up and said, hey, we have an applicant tracking system as well. You should switch to us. It's fully integrated. And by fully integrated, they meant that when you hired somebody, you would send them over to their system and you wouldn't have to re-enter their information, right? And so they said, ooh, this sounds like a great idea. It's basically the same cost. We may as well switch. So when these guys switched, I hit them up and I said, look, I, it, it's cool that you want to switch. We help them migrate their data over and export it and import it and all that good kind of stuff. We, we love our users and we try to make the best experience possible. I, I kind of have this theme. It's basically I do what's unexpected and unrequired. Helping somebody leave our system and go to another system is something unexpected and unrequired. And we help out with that kind of stuff. Um, but I said, look, here's all I want. In six months, I just want to talk to you about how things are going. And six months later, I talked to the YMCA, a nonprofit, love, love, love nonprofits to death. Death and I said, how are things going? What happened in the aftermath of switching and where are you out now? And they said, well, yeah, we did. We lost half, over half of our applicants went away. Meaning when they're getting 100 applicants per job before, now they were getting 50 or 40 applicants per job. And clearly that causes them a difficult, uh, difficult problem because they need applicants, especially as a nonprofit that might be paying below market rate. They need applicants in order to pick the best one. They need options. And so they said, well, but now we've solved the problem. We went through this dip and now we've solved the problem. We're back to where we were at before on applicant flow. I said, cool, how did you do that? And they said, well, we're just spending money with Indeed.com, like $2,000 a month. Now, if you do the math of that concept, let's just talk through what occurred, why it occurred, and how we can ensure it doesn't occur in the future um, and, and ensure you can, and this is with anything, with anybody's system, not just mine. Anytime you're looking at buying software or migrating, number one thing that occurred that they didn't quite realize was there were other types of integrations that were providing power to their, their applicant process and especially their sourcing process that they just didn't know about. And they didn't have a good way to quantify it. And since they didn't know about it and they didn't have a way to quantify it, when somebody came and pitched them something else, they made the switch about saying, wait, 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 did we really get, are we really getting in the new system what we have in the old system? And if not, do we have a process for how we're going to go about it? And is this really the best case scenario? Now, I bring that one up as a good example because it happens over and over and over again on both the front end and the back end. When, when we see clients moving from some other system onto our system, we see a bump in applicant flow. And, and this is just one of many things that integration can provide. Applicant flow is a big deal. And when they leave our system and go generally to an end-to-end -end system provided by a payroll or HRIS system, they see a drop in applicant flow. And the problem with that is number one, a lot of clients don't track before and after anyway. So they don't really know what's happening from a metric standpoint. They might feel in their gut like, hey, we're just not getting as many applicants we used to get. Number two problem is they generally don't associate applicant flow with an applicant tracking system. They, they just assume applicant flow comes from job boards. Number three, or whatever number we're on, because I'm terrible with these. Number three, they, they generally, most people don't believe they can even impact applicant flow except for by spending more money on job boards or increasing pay. And there's actually, if you watch my videos, you know that there's hundreds of ways to increase applicant flow or increase qualified applicant flow or change the dynamics and the, the different metrics that are going on in the funnel of your hiring process without spending money, without increasing pay. But most people don't know that. So they don't even they don't even give it a second thought. So what I put together, I've spent a bunch of time on this, trying to figure out how do I make it so that as an HR person, as a business owner, when you're making a buying decision beyond the normal RFP, which I'm gonna be honest, has almost nothing to do with results or integration or what I call hiring optimization, ensuring that we're getting the best output for the money and time and resources that we put in, there's really not a great way to compare it. So I built this little integration power evaluator sheet and, and I have a download at the end. You can download it. Um, I'm actually showing on the screen right now so you can see what this evaluator sheet does. What it does is it gets us to rethink 
the concept of integration. And, and we're going to rethink it on a couple different levels or, or kind of dynamics, right? The first concept is the value that an integration provides. And I broke this into five different areas. Number one is an integration might save us money, right? Number two is it might make it easier to do something, meaning it saves us minutes or time personally. And that, that normally that savings would be data entry or something like that. Number three is that it would make it faster. And that's usually measured in number of days, meaning it will shorten up the hiring process. It, it reduces time to fill or time to apply. Number four is conversion. It makes uh, conversion. If you've watched my pirate funnel or my, my talent funnel or, or sourcing funnel type videos, you know that conversion is increasing the likelihood that somebody goes from one step to the next. So for instance, it might increase the likelihood that a thousand people who see a job on a job board actually apply. It might increase the percentage of those 1000 that actually get to the next step. And then the final one that kind of goes with conversion is, is hashtag, right? It's the quantity. It actually increases the number of people going through and conversion and quantity are pretty consistent, but or, or similar, but they're just a different metric or measure. So those are our five kind of value propositions at play. Do they save us money? Do they make it easier or reduce our, our, our workload, our time? Do they shrink up how many days it takes to hire? Do they increase the conversion and therefore also increase the quantity of people flowing through? Now, those are the five dynamics. And my guess is you haven't even thought about that. But if you think of the normal integration concept, say like, integrating an applicant tracking system with an HRS or payroll system, then you're instantly going to say, this is about making it easier for us. That, that one kind of dynamic of how long it takes us to type this information, copy and paste it from the applicant tracking system to the payroll system. It's going to save us, and by us, I mean HR people, right? That time. Now, the second thing that we have to think about, or the second kind of concept is the who. Who is it saving time? Because really we're talking about time or money or number of days, right? But the question is who? Most of the time, let's let's be honest, we're inherently selfish. When we're looking at buying software, if I'm the HR person, I'm focused on me and how, how hard it is for me to do things. But there's actually four people at play here and, and way more, but four types of people at play. Clearly there's HR and if we start from the right of this integration evaluator, we start from the right-hand side and we say, well, HR, HR is the one doing a lot of the work and heavy lifting in the hiring process. and they want to save their time or energy. But the second person is the managers. The hiring managers also play a part in the process. And so we need to save their time and energy when it gets to the point where maybe they're doing interviews or, or looking at the top performers, or whatever the case may be. The third person that you might not think about because it's really just one dynamic is the employees, right? Your current employees, they do play, if you're doing it right, they play a pretty significant part in the sourcing process, which is sharing your jobs out on social media and helping you generate the most qualified, powerful applicants ever, employee referrals, because you're the most likely to hire them. The fourth one, which we're now starting to talk about recently, candidate experience, is, is the experience or, or the time spent of the job seeker, right? When the job seeker is applying to a job. Now, if we take those, those four roles and we think about integration in the normal context, payroll, HRAS, pushing a new hire over there, really that's normally just about HR. It's just about saving us the time of retyping that information. And it might be a little bit about the employee if your onboarding tool would have forced them to re-enter the information. But generally this is an HR function. But as we start thinking about integrations outside of just the simple thing of pushing a new hire over, and we look at the entire applicant life cycle and hiring life cycle, Suddenly we're talking about a whole bunch of different products and services where information that's in the applicant tracking system needs to be used. Again, either data needs to be pushed out, data needs to be pulled in, data needs shoved out at the end, connected together to make it more visible, right? And so what I've gone through is over on the left, and there's actually more, I left some options there, but there's actually a whole bunch of parts or, or steps in the, the application and hiring cycle, or again, we could go back to the funnel, parts of that funnel, that where integration might potentially be part of what's going on. And the idea of this framework is for you to sit down and look at just one job, right? If I look at just making one hire, I can go back and say, how many times do I do any of these activities or does one of the four groups 
do one of these activities during the average hiring cycle. So we start at the top and we say, well, um, HR, they have a job they're going to post in their applicant tracking system, but then they need to post it on a bunch of different job boards, right? Now, having an integration there, if we know that we usually use like say 10 job boards, if the ATS is integrated, meaning it pushes the job out to those 10 job boards, we could actually compute the amount of time it would save us to do that part, right? We can look at it and say, you know what? Posting to those 10 job boards takes one minute each. And so by having the ATS system feed it out, it's just saved HR 10 minutes. And so you can see the number of minutes times the number of times it's done per hire. We only post the job out there once per hire, right? Um, equals 10 minutes. Now, in theory, if you are multiple people for the same job, you might have to get a little more complex with this math, but you'll see that this isn't about precision. This is about reconceptualizing how you think about integration and making sure you have a balanced approach to how you set the value of it. So pushing out to a job board. Now, if you use 100 job boards, well, that's going to enhance the, the value of a deep integration. You might also have to add in that if you want to push to 100 job boards and the ATS system only pushes to 10, you might have to use a job board posting tool like Job Target or Broadbeam or somebody like that. It might increase the cost of the system, but you're accomplishing the same thing. If it's integrated with the ATS, then it reduces your time, but it increases your cost. We go to the next one. The next one is one of the most overlooked. It's getting a lot better now, but it's what we call a job board apply integration. Normally when HR thinks about an integration, they focus on an, an, an integration with job boards. They focus on posting in their ATS and having it shove the job out to Indeed to post it there or out to ZipRecruiter or Facebook or wherever. But what they miss is the fact that there's actually a two side or two part integration with the job boards. Number one was posting, which saves you time in HR. But number two was allowing the job seeker to apply on the job board and having their information feed back into your ATS. Instead of having them click and leave Indeed to come apply, they stay on Indeed, use their profile that's already there to apply. Now, why is that important? Number one, it increases the number of applicants you get. It Number one, it saves them time. We'll go back through our flow, right? Does it save us money? Well, here's how the money part comes in on the apply integration. When we go up to the top one of posting the job board and we go through and we say, well, pushing out there could save us money compared to buying a third party tool to do it. It saves us minutes because it reduces our time. And, and it probably um, or potentially increases the number of applicants we get because we're posting to more job boards. We go to the second line, we're thinking about job board applying. We're saying, well, allowing the job seeker to use their account on Indeed, Indeed says increases the number of applicants by three to five times. That's 300 to 500% more applicants. Now, if having that apply integration increases the number of applicants, it does it because it increases the conversion rate, the likelihood of somebody viewing your job on Indeed actually applying because it tells them or it reduces their friction, it's easier. If you increase the number of applicants you get from posting a job, that saves you money, right? Because if I got 100 applicants instead of 10, I'm less likely to have to go pay more job boards for more postings. And so you can see kind of, I've looked at it and said, this saves at least five minutes. It might be longer than five minutes, but saves the job seeker five minutes. In this job I was looking at, we got it. And I'm going to switch here and actually show you this that I filled out, right? saves each job seeker at least five minutes. And I got 114 job seekers on this job I looked at that used an apply integration. That's 570 minutes that were saved by our job seekers. I'm only focusing on this of time savings. I, the check boxes tell you that it also increases applicant flow and decreases cost, which is a huge deal. We go to the next one, maybe you allow tech supply in your walk-in candidates. We don't because we have walk-in candidates. But if you're a restaurant or retail or somebody like that, a credit union or a bank, um, you have a bunch of walk-in candidates and using text to apply might increase how many people apply. It would therefore decrease the, the cost of using a third party like a job board and using that text integration may make it easier. It might save the job seekers time in applying for the job. We jump down to phone screens. If you're using some automated, this could be the phone screen could be maybe use Calendarly to allow job seekers to, to schedule their own phone screen. Hey, that's going to save you and HR a bunch of time. If it saves you time, that's that's valuable. And so you could say, well, how much time do we spend making calls and trying to schedule these interviews to get them on the calendar? It wouldn't save you if you're using a calendar integration like that. It's not going to save you the time of doing the phone screen. It saves you the time of the calendaring of it. It might also decrease the, the number of days it takes, right? How long it takes between somebody applying and the phone screen since they're able to throw it on your calendar right away and you don't have the lag of you playing phone tag. 
You could also look at phone screens. We at, here with our company, we have a, a, a automated recorded phone screening tool, meaning we can send out and invite people to go and do the phone screen on their own and it records their audio. It asks them an audio question, records their audio response. That's even better than Calendarly because that's not just saving you the time of scheduling the phone screen. It's also saving you the time of doing the phone screen. So in this one instance, on this one job, we didn't just save um, uh, the time of scheduling it. We saved the time of actually conducting the phone screens. And so if you look here, we've got 20 minutes of savings for each phone screen. We did 10 of them. That's 200 minutes for HR, right? And so you just keep going down the line. Assessments, excuse me, having assessment integration with your ATS system reduces the need for both you and the job seeker to type in their information. It might also save you the time of having to leave the ATS, log into your assessment platform, click invite candidate, then type that information. And so again, we did 50 applicants, 50 applicants took our assessment. I'm figuring it saved each of us a minute. Awesome, that's 50 minutes for us, 50 minutes for the applicant. So you can see, as we go right down through this thing, whether it's the, the calendar integration, whether it's text messaging, because text messaging, not just saves us time by using a template, but it also shrinks up the time to fill because people respond to those text messages so much faster than say an email. And down the line we go, right? The farther we go down as we're looking at each type of integration, we get down to the normal stuff like background checks and HRIS and payroll and onboarding. And while those things are important to HR to not have to retype the information, generally for an, as an ATS vendor, we're only sending over like 10 fields. We're not sending over hundreds of fields of information. It's more like 10. So it might save you five minutes, but you also only do that once per hire. And so as we go down through the last two that I hand wrote in, employee referrals, hey, if we save employees time in sharing their jobs by giving them a share link and automating the email, and if we save HR time in the idea that it's sending those emails out all the time and they don't have to touch it, hey, that's kind of a big deal. And then the last one that I put on here is single sign-on. Single sign-on is super sexy. The idea that when I'm in one system, I can click and automatically log into the next. The problem is I already have logins with both systems. The login's probably saved on my in my browser anyway. And so while it might save me some time initially in creating the logins, it really doesn't save me that much time. But I, again, I added that a manager might log in 20 times into the applicant tracking system during any given hire. And maybe HR logs in 50 times. You might log in every day, but think about it, you're working more than one job. Now, what's the net result of this, right? Well, the net result is when we look down and we, we add it up, we can see the value of these different integrations and, and number of minutes saved. Clearly, your time in HR might, might be more valuable than the candidate's time. But just understand, saving candidates time reduces friction and reducing friction increases conversion and therefore applicant flow, which is something you turn around and have to pay extra for if you don't have the right integration. Now, how would I use this tool? Well, the first thing is, is I'd run through our process now and say, what stuff do we have integrated and how much time is it saving? Number two, I might look through that and say, hey, what else could we do integrations with? What other third parties throughout the entire hiring or applicant life cycle where do we touch other third parties that aren't integrated? And is it possible for us to find a way to integrate them? And again, you think through that integration, not just by saving you time, but of the four types or roles, who does it save time? And number two, does it do more than save time? Does it increase, decrease our cost? Does it, does it shrink up the time to apply or the, the time to hire? Does it increase conversion, increase the number of applicants getting through the funnel, right? All these other value propositions. So that's the number two thing I do. I recognize that I might be able to increase the integration power or value we're receiving in our current setup. And the number three and most important is you use this to then take and look at the different systems you're considering, whether this is when you're buying a new system or whether it's when you're looking about or thinking about switching to an N10 system or something like that, compare them apples to apples, say, oh my gosh, while this might save us money or maybe it doesn't save us money at all, it's saving HR 20 minutes, but it's costing job seekers 600 minutes. And therefore that may not be the right trade-off you wanna make. That really is the core goal of this entire exercise is to ensure that as a buyer of software, as a buyer of tools, that I have my eyes wide open to what exactly the trade-offs are of switching from one system to another or buying one system over another. Because I can tell you one thing, there are always trade-offs. There is no such thing as perfection. When you switch from a best of breed, say applicant tracking system, or like our system where really we define ourselves as like a sourcing optimization and tracking platform, 
The trade-off of going to that from that to say an end-to-end -end system is you might lose a bunch of functionality but you have a hard time explaining or really recognizing what all the functionality is and the power or value behind it if you don't go through an exercise like this to say, well, do, are those job boards that matter? Is it more than just posting? Is there an apply integration? What other things do we have that we use, whether it's assessments or background checks or video interviews or audio interviews or, or text messaging? What other stuff do we use during the process that matters more? And the real goal behind this is that you can then go to management or your accountant or whoever's trying to push you to make a decision that maybe you don't want to do. And instead of just saying, hey, my opinion is it's going to hurt me, you can instead make the case for exactly what's going on. You can say, look, here's this sheet. It shows you what we're losing and the value of that stuff. You could actually take, say it's going to shrink applicant flow and identify the value of those applicants. If you take your cost per applicant and times it by the number of applicants you believe you're going to lose, that's the value per job that you would lose by losing something like a job board apply integration. So again, going back to that example of YMCA, if, if this YMCA that I'm talking about had actually gone through this process, they would have looked at their end-to-end -end system and said, wait a minute, there's a bunch of stuff you're missing here. You're missing the job board apply integration. You're missing text messaging. You're missing um, the, the integration with our calendar. You're missing our background check integration. You're missing our assessment integration. And while yes, you do have these, you know, these integrations that might save us 20 minutes per hire. You're missing these integrations that actually save us and the job seekers and the managers and the employees a substantial amount of time. And you're adding a bunch of friction to the applicant flow or the job seeker side, which will reduce the number of applicants we get. Therefore, at that point, you can make a actual educated decision as a team and say, well, is it worth it? Is it worth saving us a little time in exchange for making it bad for job seekers and then having to go pay more money to job boards to get the applicant flow back up? My guess is their answer would have been no. Like it was a poor financial decision. It was a poor job seeker can experience decision. It was a poor business decision. I don't blame them for doing it. It's, it's actually just the way life goes. It's actually best practice because it is the default way that we go about buying software in the HR world. The problem is we need to evolve and mature the way that we look at these things because right now it's hurting businesses. It's hurting your business. So thanks so much for watching today. Now I told you if you stuck around below this in this email or below this video, you'll find a link where you can download the integration evaluator tool. Just go and download the PDF. You can take that and fill it out. Like I said, I use it for three different things. Number one, I, I use it to rethink our hiring process where is it that we have integrations? Number two, to add up the value and go look for other integrations that we could ask for. And number three, to make sure that we compare whether we're buying a new system or thinking about switching, that we can compare and contrast and get a very objective way to think about it. An objective way to explain to management why we want to keep what we have today and why it may not be valuable to make the switch, that the value provided doesn't outweigh the value lost. So thanks so much for watching. And until next time, good luck hiring.